Good evening. I'd like to call the regular Board of Finance meeting for Monday, June 17th, 2019 order. First item on the, first item on the agenda uh, is public forum. Anybody wishing to address the board in public forum? Hearing none, item number two, approved minutes of regular meeting of May 20th, 2019. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. I'll Good. second. Okay. Any comments, corrections? I have a typo. Go ahead. Uh, page five, under the Golf Commission, there was discussion about the Golf Commission. Mr. Hoey said he started discussions with the Gold Commission. Wouldn't that be nice? Gold would be good. Uh, I also had one on page three. It was <clears throat> um, oh, sixth paragraph down uh, in the called third sentence where it says he questioned if they would be able to bring the tuition deficit further down from the 344,000 just remove the word tuition that was the overall uh, deficit the board of ed was running at that time anything else on the regular meeting minutes I wonder if you would care to comment on item nine, because the minutes reflected uh, that we were waiting for the final state budget to come down. I'm going to come. Uh, you bring that I want to bring that up in uh, old business. I'll bring that up. Old business. It is old, old business. business. I, I did bring it up in yeah, in new business. So I'll give an update. On uh, page two. Yep. Minutes. Second paragraph. The one that starts at Mr. Ailes said, um, the line that starts expected to be, I think it should read, however, there still are some things that are not online, rather than however, that still are some things that mm -hmm. are not online. <coughs> okay. Okay, anything else? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Great, thank you. Item number three, correspondence. Number one, Standing Building Committee minutes. Uh, these are from June 4th. Any questions or comments for the Building Committee? Seemed fairly straightforward. They were very straightforward. Yeah. There were a lot of no discussion, yeah, no updates. When are I, they I believe a lot of items were also taken when off are the they agenda. Preparing, uh, <coughs> when are they preparing their report on performance contracting? We know. We asked well, it's about ongoing. That. So there was no report. There was no report on it at the time. But oh, I see. Um, it's an ongoing item, which I know we discussed last month about receiving more information over time so we can compare year from the past year. So that's a few months out, I believe, on several of the items. So. <coughs> Anything else in the building committee? Okay, pension committee. There were committee minutes of May 15th. There was a special meeting, it looks like. Was it a special meeting? It says regular meeting, but it looks like it was a special meeting because it was uh, to vote on the pension, actu uh, recommend a pension actu actuarial, actuarial firm to the Board of Selectmen, which was done. And then our uh, pension report for June 17th. Any questions on any of those? There, there was an item on the, um, that police union. <coughs> Incorporating the amendments, and I guess they're going to meet today. Do we know if if they met or or maybe Friday, not today, Friday? Uh, they met last Friday with uh, members of the uh, union, as well as our labor attorney Chris Hodgson, uh, and they ironed out some of the uh, concerns and differences that the union had with the process. Um, 
we're still going back and forth on a couple of provisions. Basically, what they're doing is they're codifying right. the overall agreement. They're taking all of the contracts that the underlying contracts that have been updated that would normally have updated the pension document that have not yet been done. So that's the piece of work that we shared with the union. They have some input, um, and we're going to accommodate uh, what we can with them. Great. So it's an ongoing process. Not, nothing final. Uh, no, nothing sorry. final yet. I guess my only I only had it's a very minor question, but on the um, they had delayed the recommendation <clears throat> because they needed more information. Did they just need information from that one company, or were they looking for information from all three companies? The, in the it, for the it, actuarial. Yeah, yeah. In the uh, pension minutes of June third, it just said. Uh, Mr. Goldblatt and Ms. Malvasi reviewed with the committee the revised proposal from Milliman based on concerns expressed by the committee at the last meeting. Looked like they were the only ones that needed to provide some additional information. Okay. I didn't know if it was a all, all of three or just that one. Just that. Okay. <clears throat> and it does look like the pension uh, investment report was positive, so as is everything the way it's trending right now, which is good. Have all the funds been moved over now to the new advisor? Now they have, have yes, okay. as of May. Great. So the next report you see be zero on one and everything will be moved over. Great. Thank you. Good. Okay. Anything else on pension? Okay. I have number four, review and accept report of expenditures for the Board of Education for May 2019. Linda and Moira. Good evening. Good evening. So I'll just run through quickly our monthly report, and then um, we do have some conversations about the 2018-19 projections okay. that we'll report on. Um, so expended first for the month of May were four million seven hundred eighty-two thousand eight hundred and ten dollars and twenty-four cents. We had revenue of three hundred seventy-five thousand three hundred fifty-six dollars. Uh, the total warrant for the month uh, is $2,153,516.22. Uh, a couple notes for the month uh, under purchase services. Um, some encumbrances for safety, sanitation, and upkeep of buildings and grounds will be canceled prior to the end of the year to reduce the expenditure amount. Um, tuition at this month, the amount expended is lower than the prior year. Um, we did receive another excess cost grant payment in the amount of $259,531, as well as uh, a remaining balance from the prior year of $39,066. So our actual uh, percentage for excess cost grant received is a little bit higher than anticipated at 73.6% for a total of $1,276,766. Um, some of that was applied to the special ed bus line, which uh, was $76,272. Um, so that's kind of for the month reporting. And then we have uh, something that you know, Linda shared with you just this evening about regarding our projections. Um, current projections that we will end the year with a deficit of $196,836. Um, this is based on expenditures through the May 2019, and um, you know, we'll project expenses through the end of the fiscal year. Uh, a couple of things to note. Uh, salaries are projected to be $373,530 under budget. Um, this amount is higher because of the number of retirees that are actually eligible to take the retirement sick pay, which is approximately $30,000 uh, per retiree. And I think we will have two that will be eligible for that benefit, while five currently are not eligible. So that's a savings of about $150,000. Um, a couple other things, like we talked about purchase services, uh, projected to be $435,000, $986 over budget. Tuition as well will be over by $240,418. Um, and the rest will hopefully be under budget. And of course, transportation is over budget as a portion of that is for special ed buses at $168,239. Um, so, in terms of the preliminary projections, 
it'll change obviously before the end of the fiscal year, but budget transfers will be required and requested at the July 2019 meeting. Um, we will end the year at a zero balance, and this will entail reducing the June medical contribution by the deficit amount. Okay. Thank you. Lots to uh, digest here. Sure, of course. Let me go first, if I could, just to start. On the purchase services uh, with the amount that's going to be canceled on encumbrances, mm -hmm. <clears throat> are there any big, uh, any large items that are being, are they all smaller maintenance items, or is there any major initiative or any major projects that are not going to be completed because of the cancellation um, of those incumbencies that you can think of? No, the, the biggest one that we are canceling is um, <coughs> for a service contract on the boilers and it was billed the same way they were billing all the repairs so it got paid from a different encumbrance. That one was about $27,000 that we canceled. Um, and the other ones are, are varying amounts, balances that we use part of it, we haven't used the whole thing. So right now I think we're up about almost $50,000 in total that we've canceled. Mm -hmm. A couple small ones for a few other schools, for some of the schools, and then uh, the majority of them are facilities. A question about safety. Uh, you expended 19% this year as opposed to 55% at this point last year. And uh, that's a big drop. And you indicated that you were gonna be holding some of the encumbrances in safety, sanitation, and upkeep. And right. I wondered what, are you people concerned that anything's been sacrificed in the safety area? Um, no, the, last year there were some addition, we changed um, contracts and it was a, a big savings from what we had budgeted before. Last year we did add some cameras, um, some security cameras, and we just haven't done that kind of work this year. But I think, you know, Cliff seems to think right now we're good for the number of cameras that we have in the buildings. I noticed you added uh, about $23,000 in cameras in, at the Leeds School, I believe. I saw that in the... Was that in the... Uh, I was saying, in the saw that in the standing that, building. Was that standing building? Standing, standing building, building, yeah. Right. The $23,000. Right, but that wasn't that wasn't from the Board of Education budget. Oh, right. from bonded bonded, bonded bonded money. It was, that was bonded, bonded money. Yeah, so it's not. Okay. Just to just be clear, that's the security. <clears throat> sorry, the security line item that Ken's talking about. Mm -hmm. The twenty-two thousand. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah, it's a twenty-two thousand dollar budget. So um, just want to make sure it was clear because right. it's a security line item. I'm just curious. I think I John. missed it. What is the deficit that we intend to take out of the medical fund? Right now, it's projected at 192,000, but I do anticipate that to change um, as we get 196. I'm sorry. Um, it, it, it's, it fluctuates daily. Um, I'm really hoping to get it under 100,000, okay. but I'm I'm still working on it. All right. I think last meeting we were. Thought it would be more like three hundred. Over three hundred, right? Okay, so right. I guess you're finding some surpluses it's, in different. Yeah, yes. So apartments. between finding, well, be, between receiving the additional funds for the excess cost grant, because I was only right. expecting seventy-two percent, and we came in at seventy-three point six. So that was a little bit there, um, and then realizing that we didn't have to pay all the retirees' retirement sick pay. Okay. We, I was originally projecting all seven of yeah. them, and it's only going to be two of them. So okay. that's a savings. And I do have a little bit of money still kind of figuring because it, there is a possibility through the end of June that we can get another retiree. Mm -hmm. um, if we don't get any more retirees, then that money will be reducing mm -hmm. the, that deficit as well. Okay, understood. Thank you. Is June 30th the deadline that they have to notify? The school district, or there and they'll just go on to the next fiscal right, year. Right, it would yeah. go on to the next yeah. fiscal year. There isn't, if they tell us by June 30th, then I would try and pay the retirement sick pay out of this year. If it's if it's July 1st or after, then I would take it out of next year's budget. Okay. There's no deadline written into the contract of when they have to tell us. Okay. 
I have another question about one of the minutes I saw, and it has to do with administrative staffing. And it looked like maybe you would hire people under some new titles so that they would actually be able to do more At things. At the high school? The, yeah. You're speaking about the high school. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it was for the high school. Mm -hmm. The recollection was right. So changing the deans to assistant yes. principals? Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. So exactly. This has been talked about for a while, um, mm -hmm. and it's been budgeted to increase one, and then and that was a couple years ago. And then a previous budget, there were some funds um, because they were only school year. And so now it's budgeted so that they both will be full year. Right. And they won't be deans, they will be assistant principals. Okay. I mm -hmm. thought it was all good news that it was really budget neutral and then they would actually be able to take on some more duties that are going to come out. They are, and they, they will. They'll be able to have more shared responsibilities. Okay. Oh, I was kind of yeah. trying to pull out the boss, and it seemed great. Mm -hmm. No, it, it's, a, it's a good thing, and I think it'll, it'll help share all right. the day-to-day -day responsibilities much better. So that's all of them, I guess? All the deans? Yeah, there were only two deans at two high deans. school. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Still under purchase services. Uh, uh, athletic, music, and other transportation. Mm -hmm. About half spent from last year. Um, was right. that a budget change from year no. to year, or um, there is a stack of invoices for the hockey transportation? Timing. That's timing and, yeah. and just a little bit. Yeah, behind. we've okay. been kind of going back and forth on on some of those. So I just got all the permission to to pay, and we've gotten all the bills straightened out. So okay. those will be so that, paid. That'll catch up. Yes, those will be paid by, before the end of June. Okay. I, just, I, I noticed that, uh, that was it. let's see, telephone, it's a small line item, but it, it seemed to have, let's see, I'm having a hard time, it seemed to have dropped way down, it's like at 74% versus 100% was last year. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, is that timing more than anything? Or are we not using the phone as much or reducing the number of lines? Unless I'm, unless I'm misreading it. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Something in the, I'm trying to think if there was anything major. I don't remember anything specific changing, but I can look into it a little bit more okay. and see what the difference is. And then the reduction in electricity, or we assume in some of that's the uh, Johnson Controls impact. No, actually, that's about that's the same. I've, I've skipped a line again. Water is down substantially. Right. That's. I can't follow across. Water is down. It was. I think that's timing of a couple of the invoices. Okay. I. I don't think it'll go up. Substantially, from where we were last year, but okay. we are missing a few invoices for water. We had a very wet spring too. Yes. <clears throat> so you had mentioned regarding the retirement sick pay you had said that there were two <clears throat> but that's out of seven so there's seven retirees this year so far for teachers for yes. teachers, teachers. Yeah. yes okay do you remember any more detail about the uh, performance contract update from ecg I, I saw in the notes that something about aw cox had mm. spiked but you thought that the measure was accurate and that did, was it much higher than we expected or Right. Uh -oh. so, it's, I'm not laughing. Yeah. It's just that it was. It's like a kind so, of complicated answer. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. A.W. Cox, when they switched over, we saw an increase in in what we were being charged. When we looked in, when they looked switched into it, to, the to um, they changed out meters oh. mm -hmm. yeah. um, as part of the the contract. Um, they we saw a big increase, and when they looked into it, what they are thinking right now, or what they're saying, is that. 
the previous meter somehow was not recording properly right. and that we were being undercharged. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, where for all this time we thought that Cox was so efficient and, and doing so great because their bill was so much lower than the other school of similar size, now we're finding out that that really wasn't quite the case and that it's now being accurately recorded. Okay. Right. Too bad it's not the other way around. Yes. The new meter was yes. charging too much. Okay, I see. Right. So that's kind of the issue they were talking mm -hmm. about. Yes. And so now Cox is in more in line. Yes. It is. Yeah. Schools. Yes. Yeah. It does indicate in the meeting that a formal verification will be completed by July 15th. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we asked them to go back and, and figure out we'll how they missed mm -hmm. that or how, you know, not how they missed it, but what, where the deficit was. Now, they didn't get into any detail about, you know, how well we're doing as far as no, what was projected or anything. No, I believe some of that's supposed to come out by this July 15th okay. deadline. This was more about what's completed right. and what's still in progress. Looks like almost everything's completed, 99%, it says? Yes. Okay. All right. There were only some... Keep, keep waiting with bated breath for the ECG report. Yes. In one aspect, food service has gone well this year. Yes, it has. Yes. It's gone very well. You know, looking at the minute, did breakfast go up 139%? I mean, it said 139. Uh, no, I think it was 139 meals. Okay. Because yeah. the figure before that was percentage, so it wasn't. No, it's 139 meals. Okay. I have 129 meals. Okay. Well, that was, was that for our last meeting or our prior meeting? It was. This is um, for May. It was 129 meals compared to May of last year. Okay. It could have been 139 for yeah. April. Yeah. The yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Because it was it was the May. Right. They think it's end of year. They were, she was talking about how at the end of the year the kids just tend to. Mom's kind of given up. Tired <laughs> 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 of making lunches, tired of yeah. too many things. And finals and things, you know. Cool. Yeah. And a lot of kids, um, it's not necessarily breakfast that they're eating. It's they're coming in and grabbing, right. like, mid-morning. Oh, um, okay. And it still counts. Like yeah. At the high school, they keep it open a little bit later, and then the kids grab something mid-morning. So, mm -hmm. you know, if they have breakfast at home before they leave for school, they could be eating you know, 6 o'clock in the morning, right? And grabbing something, yeah. you right. know, mid morning at the high school for breakfast. It's, it's definitely helped. But she has done very well. No, it's Smart. good to see. Yeah, but overall, she's done a great job. Is there anything else on warrants? No, I have eating one warrant. Go ahead. Warrants. Um, on the, uh, page 10. We, we raised questions about this at one of the recent meetings. Specialty transportation, we have a $222,000 <coughs> item in it. There's too much lumped in that for one item. Could we break that out? That is one month for the regular transportation. So it's the type one, type two buses, the transportation that goes to Mercy, to Vinyl, to Sound School, to ECA. Um, it's all the regular transportation that they do every day. And what they do is they take the whole the daily bus rate times 180 school days and divide it by 10 months, and they bill us in 10 installments. So it's always right around that. The thing that does vary a little bit um, is there's some that go only certain days of the week, so that number fluctuates. Depending on, depending on, on the month. month. So it serving. varies somewhere around that 220, 222,000 mark. Otherwise, it's fairly consistent. Yes. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was about the same as 2 mm -hmm. I saw there were a few uh, invoices for Nash Nationwide Security Corporation for service calls. Is that like for an alarm system? Or? 
Yes. Okay. The car readers um, and the security for the entrance to the building. I see. In the on page three, um, the lease for projectors and mounts is that school wide or for one particular building? It's forty thousand dollars. On page three. Page three. Oh, oh yes. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I, I see it. Um, don't rem I don't know how exactly how many projectors that was. It, it could be various locations throughout the district. don't have the number and, and where they were installed. I can get that for you if you'd like. Hmm? I'm all set as far as questions. Yeah. There was one item on page six, HD, I may mispronounce it. Seeger. H Seeger, yeah. What is that? Um, so they are our insurance consultant for non-medical insurance, so property, um, auto workman's comp they are our insurance consultant and okay. we pay a ten thousand dollar fee annually and it's split out into two payments okay. Which one you said? thank you <coughs> HTC. the medical advisor fee that's listed on page six is that semi-annual or annual that's the guilford pediatrics that's an annual fee an annual, annual fee. fee. That covers the entire school year, right? Or yes. the, the calendar year or the school year? School year. Okay. Actually, I believe he does. <clears throat> if we were to call him over the over the summers, he would he would respond as well. Okay. So it could be full annual, and it's been twelve thousand dollars for a number a of years. Time. Mm -hmm. What does he actually do? Does he come in if there's an injury? Or? Um, I he doesn't come in if there's an injury, but if there's an injury, you know, we call 911 or oh, you know, right. the nurses cool. themselves will do it. But it's, um, he will do physicals, immunizations, um, consults with the nurses. Okay. Um, there's a whole list of stuff that he Some of the health programs that they, they work into the curriculum. You have five invoices for the Grove School. One of them is unusually high. <clears throat> it's about four thousand dollars over the other three, other three or four. Um, that would be additional additional services provided to a student. We're looking for any <clears throat> final items. Um, I mean, I do just want to mention or commend the Board of Ed in reducing the amount that is the shortfall. Um, I know that's a lot of work that's gone into trying to reduce what it was at one point, which was in the six six fifty range, and there's been some transfers and trying to manage where we are and bringing it to under 200,000 and maybe under 100,000, you know, possibly next month. I uh, give a lot of credit and uh, commend the Board of Education for Thank what you're all doing. So, I know our better. chairman is here. I don't know if you have anything you'd like to, the chairman of the Board of Ed Education is here. I don't know if there's anything you'd like to add or, I think we're pretty straightforward until we see how the numbers come in next, uh, next month, but. Right, and I don't know if you want to talk about what our plan is to uh, meet that. If, would you like to talk about that at this point? Well, I think at this point, I think we see what the, the final numbers are, um, and go from go from there. I mean, we're we're looking at 200. It could be 100, and then where that 
I mean, right now the only place it would be really going to is a reduction in the medical, uh, which has already been told to, uh, has already been commented as a, as a possibility. I know last year when we were talking about this and uh, and contributions, it was a, a slightly different situation, um, and this time we're at least up up to speed and informed in terms of what's you know where where things lie in terms of. Uh, where the contribution, you know, might stand, which would be less. So, um, I don't know if we necessarily have to go into it in too much detail until we know what that final number is. So, let me just raise one other thing. Um, if you like. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, it's right that we really do need to uh, use the, well, and I don't call it the medical line, it's because it's really like any other line in our budget. We have a, you know, the seven, statutory categories within the budget and we make transfers among budget uh, headings all the time uh, every year from one to another it, it's something that happens that not surprisingly in a budget the size of this budget we don't budget to the nickel on every one of those seven lines all of them are are it's an estimate and all of them are off to a degree so we really do we have we have been very uh, we've had a positive experience with the medical expenses this year um, uh, for for a variety of reasons uh, partly it's because we had the uh, foresight to get a, a, a good stop loss uh, policy on some of the larger claims so that's that's uh, affected the, in a positive way and you know I'm sure that this, the town this, the town is going to present this further but we actually think that it may be we're going to talk about it a little more at one of our next meetings but uh, we may want to do the same thing we did last year and make some modest uh, contribution to the pension uh, line from that line uh, depending on how things work out with the rest of the year. So I, I, I don't think we would do something along anywhere close to as large as last year, um, but I think it is uh, a, a reasonable, we, we've talked to our consultant and uh, our insurance consultant, he thinks it's a reasonable uh, approach and because we do want to make sure that we're uh, on top of that pension line and that we don't have a big surprise uh, uh, the way some of our uh, sister and brother governmental agent, governments uh, at, at a higher level, shall we say, uh, seem to uh, have. So we're, we'll talk about that a little more, but mm -hmm. I just wanted to alert you to that. And, and I think that was our issue last year, that there seemed to be a little bit, there was, there was discussion, but it was then, oh, this is what we did, as opposed to this year we're a couple months out and saying this is what might be happening, just be right. prepared. Right. So if I, could, if, you, if I could raise one other issue off topic, but I think you'll be uh, interested to know this. Uh, Ms. Trudeau here to my left, your, uh, your left as well, uh, has recently achieved the uh, certification of Certified Administrator of School Finance and Operations by the Association for School Business Officials International. It's, uh, there are multiple requirements, uh, work experience, education, passing a comprehensive two-part exam, uh, and school business management topics, and adhering to the uh, the uh, Association for School Business Officials International Code of Conduct. So we did get a letter from that uh, entity, and I have copies for you, and I think uh, this copies is a to share. You. copies to, for you to have, not only to share, but to keep. Uh, so this is uh, here, here. Well done. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it was a result of very hard work by Ms. Trudeau, and uh, uh, certainly an achievement that we are pleased uh, that she has uh, sustained, uh, undertaken. So I thought you'd be interested to know that. There. I was just making sure it was signed. <laughs> it is signed. Properly executed. Yes, no, it's wonderful yeah. news, wonderful news. <clears throat> That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for the Board of Education? Well, you know what? Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, I was going to say no more questions. We're going to leave it on a good note like that. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Ken. Okay, yes. one, it, it, it harkens back to something I raised earlier about the uh, performance contracting. Uh, in your operations committee, you noticed that, you noticed that the project is 99% complete and that formal verification will be complete on July 15th when you'll issue a report. You have any anything you can share with us? Has been has the performance contracting been a success overall? Are you all, are you all pleased with it? So that was discussed at an operations committee meeting. That I had a conflict uh, and oh, I didn't attend, unfortunately. I knew it. I wanted to catch you in an absentee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I think first of all, I'm not on the committee, month. but second of all, <laughs> I, I think I'm doing okay in terms of attendance, but in any event. <clears throat> were you at that? I was at the tail end of it okay. when they were actually there, when Johnson was, yeah, right. I didn't realize. They, they met earlier, they met at 5.30 as opposed oh. to like a typical time, so a lot of us trailed in later. But um, mm -hmm. And we did touch on the topic of A.W. Cox and that finding, but mm -hmm. I think um, we'll know more come July. I think if you could just hold off until July, yeah. I think we'll be able to Yeah, I don't want to speak before data. we have the official, but... I would hope that all their projections are. If there were huge problems, you would have found them by now with 99% complete. Yeah. Yes. We'll, we'll get back to you in July. Yeah. There are yeah. Part, yeah, July 15th, items, we'll tweaking watch. Tweaking systems. I mean, that, that's got to. Yeah. That has to happen first. First year out. Right, right, right. Yeah. Great. Now, if the forecasting is not perfect, that's okay as long as our guarantee compensates. The, the, That's really the, the town key, looked at this contract very carefully yeah. and is confident that that uh, that the guarantee is the guarantee and and I will say that there were plenty of us who wanted to make sure that this was real uh, right. and uh, um, I think the town certainly would, did a, a very thorough job in vetting it and uh, um, I think the right questions were asked if we'll find out okay. right. There was a lot of bruise, bruising in the past with earlier contracts of that nature. That's quite some time ago. Yes. The old Johnson control stuff, that's right. The old Johnson controls, right. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to accept the report of expenditures of the Board of Education for the month of May 2019. In the amount of four million seven hundred eighty-two thousand eight hundred ten dollars and twenty-four cents. So moved. Okay. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. Recusals. Okay. <coughs> Item number five: Review and approve report of expenditures for the town government for May two thousand nineteen. Mary Jane. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to start with revenues. Okay. So overall, our revenues at are 101.3%. Uh, some items that I just wanted to discuss, it's, I got quite a few since it's the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Megan's already heard this once already, so she'll know if I say something different. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the building department has additional revenue. Um, I have a surplus in their line, and uh, that explains the overage in the contracted services line on the expenditure side because uh, we had significant uh, increase in fees due to um, a couple large projects for which we had contracted services um, handle that for us. So one um, kind of balances out to the other. Um, the golf course is anticipated uh, to come in under budget in their revenue. Um, probably not a surprise. Uh, the fire department continues to be current uh, on their deposits uh, thanks to their new system. Uh, they're expected uh, at, by the end of the year to come in with a surplus. I've been working with um, the chief on the revenue and expenditures for the fire department. Uh, so uh, we, we are hoping to have um, as much as a hundred thousand dollar surplus um, on the fire department side. One question about the fire department. Yes. There were three areas we noted, they're in the minutes, so we noted the last time, uh, of overages in overtime, uh, operation and supplies, or operating supplies, and uh, was another. Probably building maintenance. Yeah. Sorry? Most likely building maintenance. <laughs> maintenance, yeah. Uh, you want to talk about that now? Well, no, it just, it was one, I wanted you to be able to mention that because you were talking about revenue, about expenditures mm -hmm. being inside. Uh, yeah, I, I can talk about that. I have that in my report for expenditures. I can answer it now or, or wait for it later. Okay. Well, we'll go don't on. want to interrupt what? the flow. Okay. Yeah, why don't we go to expenditures? I know there was, there was a message sent, but let's go over it in expenditures because okay. it's, it's an expense area. Okay. If we could, if you're okay with that. Okay. All right. Thank um, you. I'll just move on. Uh, <clears throat> So Park and Rec um, should be able to bring in their projected revenue, assuming we continue to have nice weekends um, for, for all of June. Uh, you'll see on the Board of Education line towards the bottom, 
um, that there is a, a negative figure of 39066. That is the amount of the excess cost grant that uh, we transferred from the town to the back to the Board of Education based on a motion from this board. It was originally anticipated to be much higher than that, um, but that was the exact number that came in um, and that was, was sent um, to the Board of Education. And that was reflected in their report as well. Okay. Um, we are expecting our final state grant payment, um, just shy of $65,000, to come in at the end of June, um, which brings our state grant line um, pretty, pretty even uh, for, for the year. Uh, overall, uh, thanks to interest income, our tax collections, and additional ECS money, um, I am anticipating a $1.4 million revenue surplus at the end of the year. Revenue. Just on revenue. Just on revenue. That's just one uh, side. Of, one side of the, the coin. Exactly. <coughs> can you comment on the tax relief line? Tax relief for elderly dis. I assume that means disabled. Uh, it's a, it's a, a few things that come in there. It's like yes, it's a, the thirteen thousand over. Well, um, we last year we had been told during budgetary time that one of the grants would no longer be coming to us, so we did not budget for, for one of the grants, um, but they didn't change it, so we actually oh, got see. that in. So if you look at other years, the, the budget um, more closely matches the revenue. So our tax collections are higher than 100% because we're collecting taxes we didn't expect to? or. Um, the main reason for it is um, based on how we uh, set the mill rate. Uh, we do anticipate a number of reductions in the grand list. Um, when we talk about um, the grand list, the adjusted grand list that we use for budgetary purposes, we have, um, we anticipate a number of refunds, um, changes to assessments. Uh, we have a, a couple um, major tax appeals um, that are pending, so we do uh, remove a portion of that on the anticipation that some of them um, happen uh, during the year. So oftentimes the uh, plus, um, from the time that we set the mill rate in April and the time that we actually print the tax bills in June, which we haven't done, done so yet, um, there are still continue to be changes to the to the grand list. So the majority of that is based on um, the reductions we make uh, throughout the budget season. But um, considering uh, the large amount of assessments, it actually comes in pretty close. <laughs> <clears throat> there isn't a municipality that budgets 100% of their potential tax collection based on their grand list. Um, that is a standard municipal practice. Uh, the adjustments that Mary Jane mentioned goes into reducing your effective tax collection rate from 100%, which would be your total grand list, to something in the 99s. And I think we're somewhere around 99.5 oh, or 6. Yeah. somewhere in that number it's against the total ideas, grand list and that's that's standard yeah. municipal budgeting practice in fact um, some may recall three years ago when we went to three referendums on the budget one of the uh, the action items that the board of select the board of finance took the night we approved the third and final budget was to change our collection assumptions uh, and we moved it up a little bit which in effect reduced the tax burden because the mill rate goes down and the higher your uh, collection rate is. Okay. I think I also want to just express my uh, extreme disappointment in the revenue from the finance department. <laughs> it's only a half a million higher than we expected. So there's a lot of sarcasm in that comment. <laughs> but we, uh, we have interest rates to thank for that. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Uh, McKenzie was here to, to, to see that, but uh, yeah. we that's still, uh, we, we continue to use some of his ideas to, to get the money invested better. Um, and then I guess I just decided that the golf course is just not a major profit center for the town. To that point, we had yeah. uh, 
in the meeting minutes that Ken mentioned this morning. Uh, we convened a meeting with uh, members of the uh, Golf Commission, uh, as well as Park and Rec, uh, the, commissioner, uh, the chair of the Park and Rec Commission, and Rick Maynard, uh, Brian McGlone, and uh, there were three of us from the Board of Selectmen at that meeting this morning. This is the task force that uh, I think was referenced in, that, uh, in, in your meeting minutes to look and explore uh, the options available to us with the golf course. Uh, during the budget season, uh, the Board of Selectmen had some significant discussions about continuing in this vein. Are we going to continue to, are we going to say we are what we are and this is the top end revenue we have and this is what our expenses are? Are there any ways to reduce those expenses? So. This uh, committee is going to put together, do some evaluation, put together a series of uh, a couple of recommendations. And, and but at some point, you know, the course may only be able to generate X amount of dollars. And do we, you know, say okay, the town is willing to subsidize that for quality of life and recreational opportunities? Uh, and that's a decision that the board of uh, uh, selectmen will make, and more than likely, uh, talk to you folks about it. Some point. Yeah. Understood. Yeah, so we're, we're looking at probably a deficit of 130 to 140 thousand in that account. Um, what's unusual is that you know many many of the recreation programs in town we don't do that kind of P and L evaluation. We just don't do it. But the golf course always lent itself to that because for a number of years it was outside the uh, general operating budget. Understood. Thank you. Anything else on revenues? Okay. Expenditures? Uh, so um, last month when um, Sandy uh, gave my report, uh, you, you heard about our insurance line. Our insurance line was over last month and we uh, mentioned that we had some transfers yet to um, come into that line item. So I just wanted to note that as of the end of, of May, those items have been transferred. So you do see a positive uh, num number there next to the insurance line um, as reported. Uh, the legal budget I've been talking about for the past few months um, has gone over at the end of May. We do anticipate um, uh, more invoices uh, coming in for that line item. I don't have a good estimate um, for you at this time, only to say that um, I expected it to go over long before now. Uh, we've been trying very hard to scrutinize every single invoice and apply uh, expenses to projects wherever we can um, so that we could uh, minimize the amount of overage um, in this line, um, but that, that will be um, over, uh, I won't say significantly more, but you know, by the end of, end of June, we're going to see that number rise. Um, but we, we've been expecting that and I've talked about it uh, as we go along. Uh, the building department, again, as I said, um, is, is overdrawn primarily in the contracted services line, which is due to the uh, additional um, building expenses that uh, building fees that have come in. Uh, natural resources is also overdrawn at this time, mainly due to outstanding purchase orders um, and issues with trees. Um, so uh, Kevin McGee is working on, on looking at his purchase orders that he has outstanding to try to close as many of those as possible um, by the end of the year and, and hopefully move some of the work into next year if possible, but it's mainly it's just trees. We've had significant uh, amount of issues with them this year. Uh, so the fire department, uh, the, defi the fire department is awaiting approximately $160,000 of revenue from the SAFER grant. Uh, we uh, have recently been approved for the third quarter, uh, which is approximately 80000 um, and we will not be applying for our final quarter for the year until right after June 30, but um, that receivable will be booked back to the fire department. So um, some of these line items that are showing short will be covered at that point. Um, we are still anticipating um, to, to see an overage overall in the fire department, and it's mainly due to 
um, large maintenance items that they've had on their building, additional training requirements that they've had with EMS, um, and continued replacement needs um, in their salaries. Uh, but like I said earlier, uh, the chief and I, the chief, the assistant chief and I have been speaking, um, trying to get a handle on where these numbers are going to come in at, at the end of the year. Um, but the they are showing an overage in revenue that just might be, you know, eaten up by a, an overage in their expenditures. But we're we're doing the best we can. Uh, the, the building itself, I think it's over like almost thirty thousand dollars in building maintenance. They've had some significant maintenance issues there, um, so uh, that's where the the fire department stands at this time. Uh, were those unexpected, or were they? maintenance things that have been deferred over the years that they're finally taking care of They've this year. They've had some HVAC issues. Yeah. I, I can't, I, to be honest, I don't know if sure. it's something that we've had um, knowledge of in the, in the past, mm -hmm. but um, the some of the larger expenditures were HVAC related. Okay. Does overtime trend this way every year? It does. It's like 34% this year. This is about the trend of it. Mm -hmm. And replacement salaries the same way? Because that's the largest item. Correct. Actually, um, re replacement salaries since I've been here have come, have gone down. <laughs> yeah, they've been trending down. <laughs> they have been coming down, um, and uh, you know we've been trying. We've worked really hard the last couple of years to to really hone in um, on that that budget to where it should be. Uh, you know, we used to budget a very low number and, and expend a high number. At least we're budgeting. Uh, where we think they're going to come in um, now, but they, they have been have been trending. So you might also recall that the um, establishment of the North Guilford Fire Department, we hired an additional uh, we hired additional firefighters, which the safer money is paying for. Uh, that gives us now ten officers on duty the, uh, on every shift. They no longer need to bring replacements in when they send uh, folks out with the ambulances, because that was where the replacement money was coming from. We send out a couple of crews, we have to uh, backfill them. Uh, and because we now have uh, we're, you know, the, 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 the old estimated uh, full complement was eight firefighters. Uh, so there are times when they no longer have to replace uh, um, firefighters when they go out on, uh, on medical calls. And that was, that, that was talked about, I think, during the, uh, the whole evaluation of uh, whether we were going to do the North Guilford Fire Department, uh, fire Station. There was an increase in the salaries, obviously, because we got more staff, but right. there was a, co a corresponding decrease, decrease in, in the rent budget replacement decrease. salaries. I just, I just want to make a note for, just, just a shout out to Sandy O'Freddy, because you, you were not here, Mary Jane, but Sandy was here. And I just, I was looking and there's a memo here, <clears throat> response to, uh, or an email, response to Board of Finance questions. I just noticed that it appears that Sandy sent it to me and copied you with responses to the questions that Ken just mentioned on the fire department. I usually I assume that they go to everybody. So I don't know if anyone else received that email, but I don't think you did. And I apologize for that because it, uh, it came to me. Uh, but there were, I, I will forward this on. I'll make a little note here just to forward it on so you, we all have the information. It was from last month, but uh, one of the items on building maintenance though uh, that Sandy mentioned was, uh, you know, reflection of the regular maintenance on 390 Church, but also maintenance on North Guilford. And I would have to assume that with the eight additional firefighters, there's maintenance on that building to accommodate the full, the, the, the staff that are there. It's not a volunteer department anymore. So you have eight firefighters that are now using that building on a constant basis that I, I, I think it's a safe assumption to say that, that building needed some maintenance also to bring it up to well, accommodate the, it was in good shape, but yeah, yeah, yes and no. Um, those costs were identified and budgeted for in the previous budget cycle. It was in the previous budget, yeah, and, and or this budget okay. cycle. Those. Okay. These are these are extraneous costs. These are unanticipated costs. These are an, uh, okay, okay. But I, I will send this on to everyone just so you have the numbers and 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 thanks, Andy, for that. I just I missed the fact that it just had come to me. So. Um, Further on expenditures? Uh, the, the last um, items I just wanted to remind you is that we have overages um, in, in capital and, and debt. And those are items that we um, either have money in, in reserve uh, to cover at the end of the year. Um, 
especially in, in the area of, of debt and the capital the same thing but we also in capital have um, operating savings in other items in, in other departments that um, we gave the department heads permission to do some capital expenditures with that money uh, to reduce the amount we needed in next year's budget so you will see these transfers come um, at, the, at after the uh, first of the be after the beginning of the next fiscal year do you have any um, I noticed the park and rec is at 91 percent of the year they're at 91 percent expended <laughs> but if you look at the items they're quite a bit over in two areas in field maintenance and ground maintenance we have any uh, ideas to what those two areas? I, I would ha I do not know specifically. I would have to ask. I would have it's to. It's like get a back total to of forty-four thousand dollars. I can certainly look into that. Some of that may be in the conferences, though. As yeah. I'm just trying to find it. Yeah. Yeah. Ground maintenance twenty-three and. Field maintenance, 24. Yeah, there's $62,000 worth of encumbrances. So yeah. Yeah. this is the time of year where we start to ask them to, to oh. reduce them. Yeah. yeah. What happens, you know, at the beginning of the year, they, they put a, a blanket purchase order for items that they think they might use throughout the year, and they only use those purchase orders if they're needed. So this is a time we start to look to, to cancel those purchase orders. So um, as you can see, uh, Ground maintenance is over twenty-five thousand dollars, but there's almost twenty-four thousand in in encumbrances. So, mm -hmm. um, you know that that could be part. But I can certainly check with Rick uh, to to see where those line items mm -hmm. um, stand. On the capital line, was there some specific purchase that was high that made it go over by about a hundred thousand or so? Uh, well, uh, the majority of that are the um, the IT expenditures that we. Um, be transferring from that reserve um, that was one hundred and ten thousand dollars okay but that's forthcoming correct that's forthcoming we had another twenty thousand that will be coming from the engineering line okay. um, and you'll see I don't have enough on the screen but I believe there's a, a significant amount of um, encumbrances for the capital line as well I'm glad you clarified I thought maybe we just bought something and it's just much no. more than we expected no absolutely absolutely Good. not no Good. no we typically in the capital, we try very hard to stay within those capital line items because unlike your department budget, you know, so if your electricity goes over a little bit, maybe your building maintenance is under or whatever, but in the capital, um, we, we try very hard to stay within those appropriations uh, because they're specific to your department. Um, you know, just because I went over doesn't mean you can't <laughs> spend your line items. So typically we only, we see less than a thousand dollar variances um, in, in those line items. Okay. But I wouldn't say there's anything um, that had not been budgeted other than mainly the IT that we did and the, and the new vehicle that engineering desperately needed, um, which would be transferring from their operating surplus. You touched on engineering, right? Mm -hmm. what, can you repeat? I'm sorry, I think I missed it. <laughs> They have a pretty big surplus. They do. It's 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 all due to um, salaries, uh, changes okay. in personnel. Okay. Which we had budgeted previously with the or, or, you know the people that were in that position, and okay. so Understood. those those are the savings that we've um, uh, Matt and the board of selectmen allowed them to uh, utilize in other areas. Again, like I said, to reduce what we needed for next year. Take that one step further. There were uh, mm -hmm. the replacement salaries were lower than the than the uh, their predecessors, but also the assistant engineering position was vacant for uh, about two and a half months. Two two and a half right. months. So that. position yeah. vacant position vacancies tend to create those kind of surpluses. <laughs> it's a budgetary <clears throat> gimmick. The only thing I want to just uh, end with is sure. that on the expenditure side, we do anticipate coming in somewhat flat. Um, we will not be going over in our expenditure budget, but uh, you won't see the, the surplus on that side that I hopefully will be able to provide on the revenue side. So it will be relatively flat once we make all of our transfers. To that, to that point. We would reserve the right to discuss with you that if something happens between now and the end of the year where it looks as if we may uh, be close to a deficit position 
we would anticipate uh, the same level of discussion that you have with the Board of Education about utilizing some of the uh, contributions to the medical uh, to offset any potential. But as Mary Jane has just said, we don't see ourselves needing to do that at this point, but we reserve the right to come have that same uh, type of discussion with you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would assume that you'd be receptive to that. Mm -hmm. Ken's not here. <laughs> Mackenzie's not here. I thought I would ask. It looked like there was actually another outlay for Long Hill Road project. Uh, final expenditures have gone out for Long Hill Road. Um, I believe these were. Um, I just thought we were done. Uh, well, <coughs> I've just. So, um, you know, we, we have the final inspection fees um, okay. on, on the, the project. Um, we have paid off all of the uh, retainage to the contractor, uh, but we are complete at this point. Um, as I've done in the past, we'll be providing a, a quarterly report next month. Um, I'm still working with the state to reconcile our budget with them. Um, we've, uh, we need to uh, justify the bridges in one line item uh, to be transferred uh, so they they kind of state doesn't you know they, they don't give us any wiggle room if it's a twenty thousand dollar line item you don't spend a twenty thousand and a penny so um, but they do allow adjustments so we are working on uh, make, uh, requesting those adjustments because uh, I do have I believe approximately three hundred thousand left that I am anticipating coming from the state grant and once we get that budget straightened out we should be able to receive that. Okay. Uh, just one other point. Note the invoice date on that was 125 2019. So um, this has been part of that negotiation to the final. Um, okay. okay. Yeah, so yes. Yeah. Ah. Deeds way back. Ah, back. Uh, two on the weekly warrants. Um, top line uh, for Eversource, uh, Guilford Streetlight purchase. Mm -hmm. The 92, call it $93,000. Just curious on that, knowing that that purchase is, on, is ongoing. Is that one payment or is there a number of payments that are going to be, how is that structured? Um, we have a, we have this purchase and it says energy performance lease. Right. That's a single payment. Single payment mm -hmm. for the purchase of the lighting on the street lights. On not, not the poles, the lights. just the lights. The lights themselves. Mm -hmm. okay. And that closing, we just sent that out Friday. Yeah. The signed documents. The the the, the, con the contract is being executed as okay. we speak. <laughs> Good. It's a single payment. We we talked about it. At previous meetings, okay. I was just wondering if that is one payment, two payments, how it was structured. So that, that is, is full amount a of full the amount payment. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Right. So who owns the polls? They do. They do. Did we slip over? <laughs> well, they, 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 for the time being, anyway. They, they, well, no, we don't want those. Although there is the opportunity, there's another conversation we had about municipal gain where we can actually hang our own wires on those poles, which are entitled to by state statute. But nonetheless, those poles are owned either by Frontier or by uh, the electric company. Um, and it literally is every other one or something like that. Uh, so because uh, we're not going to, you know, they, they would not sell those. It's just the uh, uh, street lights themselves. So and the idea with that is obviously we're not going to, we'll no longer be paying a monthly uh, rental to Eversource for those. And this includes a retrofit of the uh, fixtures with high efficiency uh, bulbs. Um, and that's where the savings comes from. And so who takes care of maintenance and replacing the bulbs? They do. They, they do for the 20 years of the contract. Okay. Okay. Uh, one other question, only because I know uh, Mr. Beatty might ask it. <laughs> there was a payment here, Halloran Sage, for 
and it, you know, invoice description, Simon. I'm just wondering where we stand in terms of the total on Simon on legal on on that. Is there a total number? You, you've mentioned it before. Forty thousand dollars. Forty thousand in that uh, range. But uh, I can say I can, I can say with a great deal of certainty <clears throat> that you will all hear something uh, within the next four to five days about mm -hmm. that case. Okay. I just I saw it on there and I know it's been you know it it, it appears well somewhat regularly you know every other month or so I just wonder well, where I, we stand yeah, total and I, how many I, more I, but I'd like to tell you those were the uh, costs associated with the removal of certain yellow signs in town but it really is not what it's about okay fair enough <laughs> there's another three thousand dollar item in there <clears throat> this month yeah I had a question about special funds that I. Go ahead. No, we're, we're on all the warrants. <laughs> all of it? Yeah, no, any warrant. Just, just, okay. just bouncing around. We've got about, 40, about $46,000 on body cameras. Who is that? Where is that coming from? I, I assume it goes to the police. It was a private donation made to the police department for the purchase of body, of body cameras. That donation was made a couple of years ago. It has taken us that long to develop the policies associated I with uh, the use of the body cameras. We're still not finished with the long-term storage and some of those issues, which will eventually be codified in state statutes as in terms of how long you're going to have to retain that and what you should and shouldn't retain. So that, that, that was a, don a <coughs> private donation made to the uh, Gopher Police Department. Which is why you're seeing it in the special, special funds. Special funds. Was not the no, policies have been developed by the police department for its use? Yes, they have policies as to the, the appropriate use, when those are going to be turned on, et cetera. I will not share those in public. So we have the cameras, or we've ordered the cameras? Ordered, ordered them. Okay. okay. Ms. Taunts, uh, I have a question on Whatever you uh, need. <laughs> this is less a question as to the word. amounts than, than just where we are uh -huh. um, deep. And our uh, negotiations with the Army Corps and the state and with regard to our... I'm going to defer that question to Matt. Say that again. The, um, there's an invoice in there for the, uh, deep consent orders. Um, deep consent order, we have a proposed solution uh, that DEEP has given us the verbal confirmation of will be will satisfy their uh, concerns. It's a remediation project, a, a wetlands restoration project. Um, the uh, Army Corps of Engineers uh, was approached about it with favorable reception, but we don't have a formal, uh, formal uh, response from them. Uh, we're getting close, we're getting very close. Great. So we have, we have a mediation. Uh, a, a remediation a project that appears to satisfy both regulatory agencies at this point. Good. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And it's significantly less onerous than we had thought it would be when we shared information with you 15 months ago or right. whatever it was, 12 months ago. Does it have anything to do with the 21 tons of stone that are right below? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's an, it's an order by amount of checks, so <laughs> just coincidence. Yeah, just, I was just going to say, just, just simply a coincidence. coincidence. Okay. <laughs> Anything else on warrants? Madam. So with one month left in fiscal year, um, we have surpassed the uh, stop loss coverage amount, the premium, so we will have a savings which is we always kind of indicate that's unfortunate uh, for those that are in the plan, but we did plan appropriately. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we do have one month left. So right now we're standing at a just short of 5 million fund balance at the end of the uh, fiscal year. Of course, it does not take into account any reductions the Board of Education may be taking. Un understood. Mm -hmm. It's current projection. Cur not, right, right. That's, yeah. It's just no, not reflected good, in there. Yeah, no, just, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. um, anything else on medical? <coughs> so, am I right? My back of the envelope calculations that we are going to be about a million under what we forecast or so for medical for the year. 
it wasn't until you figure out what the Board of Education wants to do and you right. make that decision. They were talking about contributions <coughs> to the pension as well as okay. covering on, uh, up to. I guess I, I meant like forecasted as opposed to actual. Yeah. Correct. Uh, we start, yeah, forecasted we with, with the anticipated normal monthly um, contribution to the medical fund. I, Linda and I have been speaking about this, but I, I chose not to put those projections in here because we really don't know um, what those are going to be. That's why I you just wanted to the, note you, that. Yeah, that's you know. smart. And we start at 3.8, and the projection is 1.15. Uh, based on projection. Correct. So, um, and, and then what, uh, j just remind me again, because I, I get them messed up. The, the amount that is recommended to be in there as surplus, is it, was it two months or three it months? Depends. Recommended it amount based well, on. It really depends who you ask. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, I prefer to have a minimum of two um, months two, two expenses months. in there. Our professionals would tell you that we do not have additional money in our fund. That mm -hmm. they would, uh, am I correct, Linda? Our professionals would tell us our fund is correctly funded. Um, we are, our projections, um, what we're comfortable with, um, are, are, are less than that. Okay. I, I'm just bringing less it up than just two as. Months, sorry. Did you say? I, I prefer to have a minimum of two months okay. expenditures it's, it's in there. Less than what they recommend. The, what the, it, it depends on who you ask. It, right. That's the, really what it comes down to. The four and a half or almost five million, uh, our professionals would say it's that's properly funded, that we should not be taking money out of there. But that is just their professional, uh, you know, uh, opinions. Um, and uh, you know, we, we think it's somewhere in between. Yeah, um, and I understand. It's, it's you know, so yeah. correct. Right. You know. Uh, We'd love to have four million in every fund, but you know. <laughs> I don't know. They have a little too much money laying on the side, you know. Right, um, but that's what you use. know. You know, I I feel somewhere, you know, two two fifty minimum to two months. Um, I I would prefer to have that in there at least. Um, I'm I'm bringing it up largely because we'll have this discussion over the next couple months. I think of okay, we have this, mm -hmm. we have this additional and. Do we want to do anything? Do we want to touch it or do we not? And that's right. got to be uh, yeah. consensus, I think. We could, we could cut it in half, but no more. Th I would not recommend any more than that. Okay. By far. Okay. Anything else on medical? <coughs> Have we covered everything? I think we've covered everything. Anything else in general? Except the special correspondence from them. Oh, we can do that. Well. Uh, you know, I was going to do that under new business, but we could just do it now under the, 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 the uh, we're talking about the ambulance? Yeah. The memo? We, we could do it here. You know, I should have added it as an agenda item just to, but, um, <clears throat> that's, so. That's its own line item, are you? Yeah. You want me to stay here? You have something that I would stay here for, or I can go back to Um, I, I, I don't think so. I should add as an agenda item. Yeah, could I will be able the um, notice from the first selectman here about um, action the board of selectmen took, add it to um, maybe, maybe 5A? 5A. Standalone? On the no, agenda. Yeah. A letter dated June, June 17th, 2019. I'll second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you, Veronica and Jeff. Um, so 5A added ag uh, agenda item. So this uh, memo just came to us from uh, basically this morning um, to us from our first selectman uh, regarding Board of Selectmen's actions of June 17, 2019. I'll just read it very quickly. At its regular meeting held June 17, 2019, the Board of Selectmen took the following action. Voted unanimously to waive the bidding and purchase an ambulance from Excellence that's the name of the company, in the amount of $214,490.77, pursuant to the language of the $2,402,000 bond resolution approved on April 9, 2019, the Board of Finance must make a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen in order to expend funds and or contract for services based on approved authorization of the two-year funding of the town's five-year capital plan. Um, so this just happened this morning. I believe I just 
while we were um, going over other things, I looked back and I believe, just to be correct, I just <laughs> just to clarify, I believe the budget was two hundred and sixty thousand dollars for this particular item. Two sixty, I think, was the budget. Two. I I, I I looked it up. Back. I just went back and looked for ambulance replacement. It was two hundred sixty thousand dollars for the budget, and this is two fourteen. So it came substantially less. Came in lower. Which is good, always good. And this and this is the vendor that we've used for our ambulances so and we our ambulance response for some time. Yes. Okay. Um, so that's uh, needing a motion from us. Do uh, can I hear someone put that in the form of a motion to um, accept the waiving, accept waiving the bidding and purchase of an ambulance from Excellence in the amount of two hundred fourteen thousand dollars forty four hundred ninety dollars seventy seven cents. Sure. Yeah. Yes. You are just uh, authorizing the purchase. We do the waiver of the bid. Oh. That's our policy. Our, our policy and procedure. All right. So I'll move that we make a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen to expend the funds uh, in the amount of $214,490.77 to, pur to purchase the ambulance from Excellence. Okay. Any further comment? I have a question. Sure. It was this the uh, line item on this year's budget referendum, so isn't that doesn't this take action July 1st? No. That's this year's money. Is it this, is it this year's money, or is, I thought it was last year's ambulance money? It's, I think it's this year's. Yeah, I think it's this year's. Is it this year? It was approved on April 9th, 2019. You're right. True. So we're approving, we won't pay for it until. So we can't pay for it until July, but we could approve it tonight. We can approve it tonight. Wait, well, we will take it for July 1st. We'll actually. take delivery. Uh, approximately 120 days after the order. Yeah, it takes a while. Anyway. We have the authority to issue a purchase order prior to July 1. Thank you. Can I ask a, just a question about the backstory on this? Was this uh, where we were trying to determine if a remount was better than the uh, purchase, and, and you decided to do the purchase, I, I believe, right? Right. Yes. Okay, and then I'm just curious, what's the backstory about waiving the bid? Backstory is this is the vendor we've been working with. We've worked with almost exclusively at the fire department. Uh, owing to the performance uh, that they they produced over the years, um, the last time we went out to uh, bid for uh, or not not bid, but last time we bought something through them, we got uh, alternative prices and they were within one or two percent. Um, so this is the vendor, this is the preferred vendor that uh, uh, that that we like to spec gear with. So. Now is that is that in line with policy though? I thought anything over fifty thousand we would we have the right to, to we have the right to waive it as a board select. We, we do that, uh, I wouldn't say regularly, but it's not unusual for us to do that in certain circumstances. Um, there are some sole source uh, vendors uh, that, we, that we don't have uh, alternatives to get competitive pricing. And yeah. this is for a brand new vehicle, right? Because they sell used right. and new. Say that, I'm sorry. It's for a brand new vehicle. It's for a brand new Because they vehicle. do both, this right. company, I think. Yes. It's brand new. Okay, any further comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Tracy, did you see that? Yep. Okay. Mike, you have to take a motion on the expenditure for the town. You know, the town. Dr. Mary Jean. Oh, yeah. right, we jumped at five. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> got, I, got, I, got so, I got so involved in the memo, I forgot about the actual the major one. Okay, so just. Referring back to item five, uh, do I hear a motion to approve the report of expenditures of the town for the month of sorry May? No, I know I'm my system's all over the place here. I had it in here. Let me try again. Motion to approve the report of expenditures of the town for the month of May 2019 in the amount of two million three hundred sixty-six thousand one hundred sixty-eight dollars. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Recusals? I do have a recusal from the April 15th, 2019 uh, special. F um, it's a recusal from an April 15th, 2019 payment to Antonazzi Associates in J on the uh, June 17th special fund warrants. Okay. 
Going on to item number six. <clears throat> Discuss and take possible action on engagement letter with Bloom Shapiro and authorize the chairman to sign. Um, I'm going to save, save, uh, save the effort of reading the 18 pages that was sent to us, but this is basically uh, the, uh, we just need to get a motion to authorize the final, uh, the, the engagement letter of Bloom Shapiro for financial auditing services for fiscal year 2018, 2019, which would start July 1st, the period starting July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019. Um, okay. Mm. So moved. Put that in the form of a motion. Second. Further comment, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Item number seven, building uh, committee reports, building permits. Any questions on that? Okay. Item number eight, old business. Uh, this is where I did indicate before that I wanted to provide a summary of the state budget impact. Um, I did this under new business last meeting, so I just wanted to provide a, a quick uh, snapshot um, of the fiscal year 1920 approved budget. Um, so we did get a portion of our ECS funding cut, um, and I'm sure that people read about that. I just wanted to note that um, based on the $194,000 cut to ECS funding uh, that we experienced uh, in this approved budget, we did plan for a $294,000 cut, uh, which was actually reflective of a 50% um, initial recommended cut of the governor. So uh, it was not nearly as much. And we also did not have to take on a payment to the teacher's retirement uh, contribution um, we didn't have to make a payment for that uh, that was not included in the budget so we will actually see a, um, a additional revenue uh, that we uh, we planned for more cut but we will see two hundred sixty two hundred sixty six thousand dollars more in revenue for fiscal year 1920 um, I did want to note though that for fiscal year 2021 the next year we are going to see a three hundred ninety thousand dollar cut uh, which is basically double the 194 um, that uh, we will experience this year. So that will be, the, the good thing is that we can plan for that for next year already, uh, seeing that it's a two-year budget. So um, I do want to definitely uh, commend uh, our legislators for the work that they did in mitigating any cuts. We did see some, but not nearly what we had planned for. So I believe that uh, I congratulate this board and. Uh, the decisions we made in, in anticipating more of a cut and actually having a little bit more revenue. So, um, any further comments on the budget, state budget? I wish we didn't anticipate that much. I know you didn't, but I think it was to our to our our, our better interest to be able to do that. So, um, but as we know. As we all have our own, our own opinion on this board, so yes. I appreciate that. Um, item number two, I had on for old business. I just wanted to, we've been bringing up the uh, OPEB trust process. Um, and of course, I think I'm bringing it up to carry it in old business. Uh, I know that there's a process that needs to be done, but I also know that we're going through the, uh, we have additional medical funding right now that. Uh, I think we need to get through the fiscal year, see where we end, and then continue on that discussion in terms of a process for that, um, which really needs to be um, discussed, I think, a little bit more, and, and we figure out what the process is. I do know that there was a uh, email that was sent from October, November, which had the process that was written by um, Mary, Jane sent it Mary, Jen, Mary Jane sent it, and I forwarded it on to the board. For yeah. consideration in terms of that process so um, you know whether we transfer or make any changes uh, transfer from medical um, into an OPEP trust of any amount we should discuss further um, I just want to keep it on the old business anything else under old business anything under new business okay 
item number 10, public forum. Okay, hearing nothing further in public forum, I'll entertain motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.